And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There are great games. There are games that stand the test of time, that are wonderful and fantastic. But then there are games which, ah, uh, I think they're good games. I don't know, I would, I would wonder, should I call them great or not? But they're so much fun to play that they're an absolute blast. Yami is such a game. Uh, it basically is, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's the Japanese word for trying to figure out what another person is thinking. And that's what this is. This is rock, paper, scissors, but on a higher level. Or thematically, it's a fighting game. For those at my age, you grew up with Street Fighter 2, you know, a great fighting game, Hayuken and all that sort of thing. This is that in a board game form, but it's fast, it's fun, it's varied, it's balanced, and it's just neat. Let me show you how the game is played. Now what you're looking at here is the inside of the deluxe box version of this. To play this game, you simply need two characters' decks. Uh, so for example, you could use these two characters and you can buy the, the decks in packs of two. This is the deluxe set what comes with all ten packs. Now this is not a collectible card game or anything else like this. Each one of these decks is all that character has or ever will have. They are that character and this game also comes with these big mats but you don't need these mats to play the game but they sure do make it look a lot nicer. So let's take a look at how the game works. So you place your mat in front of you and you pick a character that you're going to play. So here I'm going to pick this character who is Master Midori, and he is, can change to a dragon. And this shows you here his stats in the different categories, like attack, throw, block, and dodge. It shows his maximum combo, and then it shows his special ability, and then his hit points. Now that sounds all complex, but it's not. You just basically, for the beginning of the game, you need to know his hit points. Then you'll take a deck for that character. And this deck is basically a typical poker deck with two jokers thrown in. And you can see, I guess you could play poker with it, although I can't imagine anyone ever actually really doing that. Uh, and these cards are double-sided, so for example, this two here is a throw, but on this side, it's a block. You shuffle your decks, you will draw cards, and then on your turn, you will simply play a card face down towards your opponent, and he will play a card face down back at you. So let's say we're playing Rook here, and so he plays a card facing me. We then turn the cards up like this. I played a 6 attack, and he played a 7 attack. Now, this is where the game devolves into basically a rock, paper, scissors. You have to understand this little chart here. Attacks always beat throws. Throws always beat blocks and dodges, and blocks and dodges block or dodge attacks. Now, we both played attacks. In that case, we will then look at this yellow speed number and the smaller number, the 6.2, that attack is faster. Usually if you play a smaller attack, it's faster than a bigger one. So this guy wins, and he's going to do 6 damage to me. Now, it's possible at this point in time for him, this says combos into a 7, a link, or an ender. It, this, you can see in an orange spot there that there's one dot out of three used up. So it's possible for the for me to now play more cards from my hand to combo up and attack him. He is allowed to play a face down card which if it happens to be a joker he'll avoid the extra hits otherwise he loses the card. So there's a possibility for combos. Combos don't happen too often but some characters are better at doing them than others and some characters use them pretty much every turn when they get a hit. And then whoever loses the damage will adjust their hit points accordingly, and you play the next card. And you will continue doing this, and each turn you'll draw a card in between turns. So if you play combos, you might lose cards. Again, you have to remember the, the mix-up. So if I play attack and he plays a throw, the attack wins. If I play a throw and he plays a block, the throw wins. Now, throws and attacks are very similar. They both lead into combos. Blocks and dodges, if I block someone's attack, Let's say they play an attack and I play a block. This block actually goes back into my hand. So when you play a block and you successfully block with it, you don't lose the card. That's useful. And you get to draw a bonus card from your deck, increasing the size of your hand. Dodging an attack is handy. If you dodge an attack successfully, then you can immediately play a counter attack or a counter throw that can't be blocked by your opponent. Most of the characters have... 
the similar attacks, throws, and blocks. But their face cards, the, the jacks, the kings, queens, and aces, all have special attacks usually that can do all different things. For example, here, uh, when you hit, you can discard another jack for an extra 8 damage. So when I play this and I have another jack in my hand, bam, bam, I just did 16 damage to the other person. The aces are the most powerful. You can see this one here is 20 plus 16 if I get rid of another ace. Uh, they're very powerful, uh, but if you know the other person has an ace in his hand, you can block it. At the end of each turn, there are some special abilities that can be played, but you are allowed to discard a pair of cards to search your pile for an ace. You're allowed to discard three of a kind to take two aces, and you can pull them from your discard pile or your draw deck, so it's easy to get aces. Your opponent sees that you have those aces, though, so he can learn to block or throw cards successfully to stop you in that regard. So, like I said, it's a big rock, paper, scissors, but there's special abilities. And, like, for example, this guy here, if he plays a certain card, he can turn into a dragon, in which case his attacks can't be dodged as long as he stays in the dragon form. The characters are very balanced, and while some do better against other characters, for the most part, I haven't found any character that seems weak. My personal favorite character currently is the panda, mostly because he's the chanciest of all the characters, and I just have a blast playing that. But there's ten different characters. The artwork is superb. As you can see, looking at the cards, I like how the back of the card, doesn't matter which way you flip it, your opponent won't know which side you have. And the background really matches the theme. It's an excellent, top-notch production. If you want to learn how to play the game more than my simple, incomplete uh, explanation here, there's a few things I didn't explain, like knockdowns and such, but you can go online and actually try the game out uh, at the company's website and play it for yourself to see if you like it. I love this game. I love it, 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 love it. It is just a blast. I've played it dozens of times now. Uh, the only disadvantage, I guess, would be that it's a, only a two-player game. But it's fast, it's fun, you get two decks, you play together. Now, some people can't stand the style game. They'll say, oh, I don't like trying to guess what the other person does. And, you know, for example, playing rock, paper, scissors, you have no idea what the other person's going to play. In this game, you do. Because each character, for example, the rook character, the guy made out of stone, one of the things that he can do really well is he can throw. So if I'm playing him, I know that the chance of him doing a throw is probably a little bit higher. But the other guy knows that I know that. So there's a bit of that whole Princess Bride thing going on in there. But in this game, it just feels differently. You're constantly trying to outmaneuver your opponent. It's not just outguessing him. It actually almost feels like a war game where you're trying to play the correct tactic to what he's going to play now. Games can go back and forth, keeping the cards in your hand, playing the right combo. Combos can give you more aces, too. There, there's like, Again, there's a few small rules, which I, I didn't mention, but for the most part, it's really simple. I can teach the game in five minutes or so, get up and running, and if you think it's just luck, just outguessing the other person, rock, paper, scissors style, play someone who's good at it, and you'll find that it's not even remotely lucky at it. If you've not played the game before, and I have, my chance of beating you is much higher because I know how to play the cards now. I know that oh, you, know, you just did this, and you're probably going to do this now because it seems like the best move for you, but I know that that's the best move for you. I don't know. It's just a, it's just so much fun. And the 10 decks brings a lot of variety. I'd love to have 10 more decks with more characters, but these 10 will keep me occupied for a long time because there's, I guess there's technically, I don't know how many different matches. Uh, there's 100 different permutations, but uh, combinations, what's that, 50 or so. But just the different matchups that you can have, there's, there's many of them. So play online to see if you like the game or not and I would recommend getting this deluxe version because it really is nice and comes with everything you want to you want to see. So that's my review of this game. You probably haven't heard of it. Uh, it it's being self-published by the publisher, but wow. I'm looking forward to see what they come up with next. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio and video reviews, as well as the number 1 board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.